We move into April with a severe risk unfolding across the central U.S., particularly in Oklahoma, where we have a moderate risk in effect. The world's hot spot, 118 degrees, reported in western Mali. And the world's cold spot, not counting the ice caps, minus 37 up there at Peli Bay, now known as Kougarouk. However, on Antarctica, they are approaching the minus 100 mark. That's how the sky looked in Palestine, Texas, just a few minutes ago. Tropical moisture, very thick cirrus, and a bit of stratocumulus at about 3,000 feet. The weather map this afternoon showing that polar front extending from northern Missouri into southwestern Kansas and picking up as a Pacific front entering west Texas at this time. Also, we have a dry line extending from about Dodge City down to Vernon and down towards about Dryden, Texas. We dust off digital atmosphere. Of course, that's a software program I wrote. You can get that at weathergraphics.com. And you can see we've added the mesoscale data. A lot of plots in here you normally don't get on the internet, so that's a huge advantage. And I've also got the basic pressure analysis from the NAM. And of course, we can get that in Digital Atmosphere 2 through this import grid panel. So a lot of good stuff there. So let's go in and do that map, look it over starting with the southern end, and we can see that tropical moisture feeding into the Texas Hill Country, into the Abilene area. Dew points there are still about 63. We've got this transition area behind the dry line, dew points a lot lower, and then the cold front, big old wall of cold air just past Midland, just past the Davis Mountains, and really knocked that temperature down in the Big Bend. They were 84 degrees at Presidio about an hour ago, now down to 70 and falling. Heading further north along the front, we hit the surface low around Dalhart, and then the Canadian front slipping into northwestern Oklahoma and down towards Trinidad and Boise City. Triple point just north of Weatherford and the dry line right down through Altus, down towards about Paducah, actually a little bit southeast of Paducah, and on down towards Jayton and Sweetwater. So this whole zone right there, that is being watched for severe weather development. Let's take a look at what's happening right now. And of course, we can just add on some radar data to complement our surface analysis. And there you go. You can see storms already going up near Abilene right ahead of that dry line, and additional storms further south towards San Angelo. Up to the north near the triple point, not very much going on until you get around Bartlesville, north of Stillwater, on up into southeastern Kansas, a few cells going up there as well. And there's a look at the close-up radar with GR Level 2. These cells look multicellular, so I don't see much tornado potential at the moment, but Still, these cells are in the process of organizing, and we could see additional severe weather this afternoon as they track towards the east. And, of course, visible satellite data. You always want to be looking at that on a severe weather day, especially if the boundaries are more subtle. Not so much on a day like this where everything is strongly forced. We do see the cold front coming out there past Midland. A little bit harder to pick up in the panhandles. And the dry line, that's very vaguely indicated by this little area of clouds in southwestern Oklahoma. And, of course, the deep convection around Abilene. Not very much in the way of low clouds out ahead of this complex. So maybe a few problems there with the moisture depth. But it does look like as you go further east, plenty of moisture on tap and probably a fairly good depth. Here's a good chart to look at. This is going to be theta E. So basically, when you're looking at a parcel on a sounding, the higher the theta E temperature, the further to the right your lifted parcel is, and that means more cape. So given equal conditions in the mid and upper levels, the higher the theta E, where you see this 
dark blue and purple. That's going to correspond to your stronger severe weather. And of course, I got the reflectivity here. So let's follow along. You can see the valid time up there at the top. So this starts out at 1 p.m. And as we go forward to 2 p.m., 3 p.m., you can see the model picking up on that convection near Abilene. This is about where we're at right now. So this is going to be a good verification for the model. And I think this is actually fairly close. And I do see that moisture deficit south of Abilene, where we have the lack of low clouds. But as you go further east, we pick up on more moisture. So the moisture axis is located about right there at the present time. So as we go forward through the rest of the afternoon, looks like a lot of convection tracking into the Wichita Falls area, Seymour, and uh, what's that town, Winthorst, south of Wichita Falls. Then it moves along the Red River towards dinner time, 6 p.m., 7 p.m., and a lot of convection through Oklahoma where they have that moderate risk and effect. And the activity continues through the evening and possibly a second round further south from Fort Worth south to the hill country. And that moves eastward through the overnight hours. And the satellite imagery pretty much verifying what we're seeing on the high resolution rapid refresh. Maybe a little bit faster with the progression of this convection towards the Red River. And to see what kind of weather we're going to get, we go to Pivotal Weather, the High Resolution Rapid Refresh, and pull up a forecast sounding. So let's go forward. I'm going to pick out that parcel right there, just southeast of Wichita Falls. That should be fairly representative of what's going on. Looks like some pretty good shear there from 0 to 2 kilometers. 0 through 1, not quite as strong, and just minimal curvature although the right mover vector is off the hodograph and that gives us a little bit of SRH there. So not really a classic tornado type setup here, but definitely plenty of cape, plenty of bulk shear, and some good shear between the storm motion vector and the anvil levels, indicating good ventilation. So at this time, we've got this one dominant cell around Albany, Texas, tracking up towards Graham and Jacksboro and this tail end cell just south of Abilene. That's going to be in that gap. Forgot the name of it. It's been years since I've lived in Abilene. There's our storm there near Albany. That's going to be the updraft area. And switching over to the storm relative velocity. Little meso there, about 50 knots of shear. Across a distance of, if I can get this to come up, across about 1.5 miles. So that's going to be the meso outbounds and inbounds. The Oklahoma City radar, rather quiet right now. Some elevated convection from, I guess, around Dover up towards Ponca City. The velocity showing those backed winds right there. See that right there? That's going to be the inbounds. Those are the outbounds, and those are through the lowest 2,000 feet or so. I can zoom that in a little bit. It's always good to go up to the higher tilts for that. You can see that zero line indicating strong SRH. This is a page from the Weather Analysis and Forecasting book. This is one of my books at weathergraphics.com, and this shows you how that strong SRH should look. We're only looking at the lowest three or 4,000 feet of the atmosphere, but that does show that characteristic S shape of the zero line. If there's very little directional shear, it's going to look like this. And if the winds are very weak, a little bit more like this image on the left. There's the radar image out of Tulsa showing a very strong storm along the Kansas-Oklahoma border. This does look supercellular, and it's just west of Coffeyville, Kansas. The velocity showing a meso right there. The shear on that is, well, let's see, we got about 30 out, about 35 in, so that's going to be about 70 knots across about two miles. And that could be a little TVS right there. You need to be looking for consistency on features like that. That's indicating about 20 out and 35 in, so that's not terribly strong but that would be something to watch. And it's right there on the apex of that hook. So the clock is ticking and we need to get this 
rendered and uploaded. So let's go ahead and do that. 6 p.m., cold front. I probably have that a little bit too far east. I think the actual location, about like this. And I think that might actually be the dry line. This was just a preliminary analysis to kind of show where the boundaries are. So take that with a grain of salt. There's the Canadian cold front and a warm front out there in central Illinois and Indiana. Overnight, lots of storms in the Ozarks up to Illinois. Probably got that low-level jet established. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So there we go. We got a broad 30 to 35 knots this evening from about Dallas to Little Rock up to St. Louis. Then the overnight hours, that's kind of critical for the Midwest. We're picking up 40 to 50 knots. Very veered, though. However, if you have any sort of easterly component at the surface, that's actually going to give you some pretty good SRH. So that would be something to watch there. By tomorrow morning, the main Bear Clinic low, northern Missouri, Canadian cold front extending south, and the warm front like that. So we're setting up for another round of severe weather for tomorrow. Looking at 40 knot flow out of the southwest through the Ohio River Valley. And then tomorrow evening, still maintaining about 45 to 50 knots with kind of a veered wind profile. So at 6 a.m., the maps look like this. There's our large tropical sector in the Mississippi River Valley. 12 p.m., now we're starting to get heating, probably some storms forming from Indianapolis down towards Jackson and Memphis and other cells possibly out ahead towards Cincinnati, Frankfurt, and maybe as far east as Huntington. Cells continuing to build eastward through the evening, making it into the Appalachians through the overnight hours. There's the triple point near Pittsburgh. Then by Wednesday morning, the maps looking like this. Cool sector across the northeastern U.S., triple point somewhere in northern Virginia. And things continuing to push eastward. This is a new Barra Clinic development zone across Chesapeake Bay about midday tomorrow. And that moves up the coast into New York about 6 p.m. And right there along Block Island, Nantucket Island, and so on. Large zone of snow from Maine out to the Great Lakes and some lake effect snows getting reestablished. Also some snow near this cold core low across Ohio for Wednesday evening. And then we shift our sights west, another strong California system. And you can watch that push on into the Great Basin and Rockies. And we'll be contending with that this weekend. Then we get up to the time of the eclipse. And unfortunately, the models have been fairly consistent, bringing up warm advection into Texas and Oklahoma. So that could be a factor. You can see even some precip breaking out across Texas. This is right at the time of the eclipse. Better prospects, as I've been saying, appear to be in the Ohio River Valley. The track of the eclipse running about like something like that there. One last check of our storms before we wrap things up. Got an MCS running from about, uh, I guess, Throckmorton down to San Angelo. And it looks a little bit elevated, a little bit outflowish, but the moisture properties are going to change as it moves to the east. And we could see some windows of severe weather through the evening as it approaches Dallas and the Red River region. So this just came in. This is the 20Z high resolution rapid refresh, and this will give you an update. This corresponds pretty closely to what we have right now. There's actually a little bit more development down towards San Angelo. But as we go through the evening, 5 p.m., 6 p.m., a series of what looks like kind of bow echo structures around the Red River from Chickasha down south of, I guess, uh, that'd be around Bowie, Texas. A lot of those stronger cells close to this purple where we have higher theta E's. But you can see out to the east, less theta E. And those cells will eventually outrun that moisture axis and become a little bit more elevated, more linear structures, large MCS from Springfield down towards McAllister and other cell complexes in the Red River. So this is going to be about 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. and so on. But still, a few isolated cells out there. The cells obviously have departed the better moisture, but there could be some residual severe weather potential through the evening, especially on isolated storms 
and storms on the tail end. And as for tomorrow, moderate risk in Ohio, a couple different solutions, the FV3, bringing this complex, this MCS, into Ohio. Some widespread severe weather expected with that. The WRF, ARW, going a little bit different with discrete cells in Kentucky. So there's a couple different ways that this could go. Anyway, we'll be back tomorrow for the supporter edition. And after that, we'll return on Friday for another episode of Forecast Lab. And I'm going to let you all know that this is one of the very rare times that we do a sale on the weathergraphics.com site. 25% uh, off digital atmosphere, the software products, the data products. So feel free to check that out. And the code for that is April Showers when you check out. So hopefully you can find a useful tool or product that will work for you and that helps support this program. And yes, it does include digital atmosphere. In fact, let's take a look at the plot. And we see some very interesting weather there in the Big Bend. Look at that, 97 degrees in the eastern part of that park. And on the backside, right there, the west side of the park, temperatures cooling enormously down to 71 degrees at Presidio. And this is all the Pacific air flowing into the Llano Estacado area, Big Spring, San Angelo, at least approaching that area. And this is the air back behind the dry line. So a lot of stuff to look at this evening. So we'll close it up for now. A special thanks to Greg for this drone footage from last week. And we'll be back tomorrow for the supporter edition and on Friday for everybody else. Okay, hope you have a great Monday evening. Take care and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.